John Fritz. You may not like his catching, but you can't beat his pitch. My disability is obvious, but my abilities may not be as apparent to you. Through activities during Handicapped Awareness Week, May 18 through 24, we as disabled people can help you to learn more about our abilities. A variety of activities are planned throughout Minnesota. To find out more about events in your area, call the Minnesota State Council for the Handicapped. Remember, the most important part of the word disability is ability. A tornado, the most violent wind that sweeps the planet's surface. I'm Mike Fairborn, and here at WCCO Television, we're preparing for the tornado season, and there are some things that you should know ahead of time. A tornado watch is issued when conditions are favorable for storms that could produce tornadoes. It can last for several hours, so monitor your TV or radio continuously. A warning is issued only if a tornado has been sighted or detected by radar, and it means take cover immediately. In a weather emergency, get the total weather picture from Channel 4. WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. From WCCO Television, the Northwest's leading news station, this is the 10 p.m. report. Good evening. Tonight, thousands thrilled to the opening performance of the Shanghai Acrobatic Theater at Northrop Auditorium in the Twin Cities. In Boston tonight, the Minnesota Twins are losing to the Red Sox in a rain-delayed game. In Maryland, both political frontrunners, Carter and Reagan, won their presidential primaries, and both men are also leading in Nebraska. And layoff notices may be going out to more than 300 Minneapolis teachers, as recommended by the school board tonight. And that only underscores part two of our special series of reports on the teaching profession, called Flunking the Future. But first, or at the outset tonight, let us update the details out of Kalamazoo, Michigan, a city which is said to be in chaos this evening after three tornadoes twisted right through the downtown area. At least seven people are known to be dead, 70 more injured. One of the twisters smashed into a downtown shopping mall. The roof collapsed, killing three people inside. The roof was ripped from a 10-story office building. The winds shattered every pane of glass in it. Some people are believed still trapped in the rubble of that building. Some looting has been reported. Kalamazoo Mayor Edward Annan has declared a state of emergency tonight, and National Guard troops are now moving in to assist in the massive job of cleaning up. They'll be up all night in Kalamazoo tonight. Last night, at this time, the town of Sedalia, Missouri, was being ripped down by a series of tornadoes. No deaths here, but there were dozens of injuries, and early damage estimates now have been set at $50 million. 200 Sedalia residents still without homes this evening. Twisters also hit parts of Pennsylvania, causing extensive damage there. Doug? And back here at home, St. Paul firemen tonight still don't know exactly how much damage was caused in a huge fire that struck a portion of St. Paul Central High School under construction. WCCO's Tom Hendrick reports on that. We'll be out of school for the rest of the day. That may have been the understatement of the day as fire ravaged the top two floors of St. Paul Central. All students were safely evacuated, and so were the construction workers who've been renovating the old school for the last year and a half. Efforts, apparently, which have been for nothing. And this is stuff that uh, should never have happened, but being ex as long as they're going to allow the kids in school, you're going to have this problem. There have been several suspicious fires here in just the last week. All of them are unexplained, and in this case, at least, arson is suspected. We suspect it was a set fire, yes. Uh, as firefighters contained the blaze, others sifted through the debris for clues. Neither students nor construction workers were supposed to be on the floor where the fire started. It started in a library area, which had been checked by security and sealed the night before. It's a mystery, you know. Uh, the windows are all locked. There's no windows on the inside. The windows on the outside are closed. Somebody's got to be getting in there some way. Construction workers blamed students, but they had their own ideas. These construction workers, they use that cocaine gas to keep themselves warm. If there was kids that went up there, you know, somebody was bound to see them go up there and stop. That's the way I feel about it, you know. An investigation is underway to determine the cause. A precise dollar estimate has not been made. It'll be Thursday at least before students are back in the classroom. Meantime, school's out. Tom Hendrick, WCCO Television News, St. Paul. 320 Minneapolis teachers may soon be getting notices that they are out of a job. School personnel officials made that recommendation at tonight's school board meeting. 
But it was quickly pointed out that the majority of those who receive no, uh, termination notices are usually recalled for service the following fall. The school board will probably not have a firm idea of the exact number of teachers to lose their jobs until midsummer. Dozens more hotel and restaurant workers are out of work on strike tonight. Three more hotels in Minneapolis and its suburbs have been struck by employees of Local 17. That makes 12 hotels under a picket line tonight. And union workers promise to continue expanding the strike until management comes to the bargaining table. Management and labor came to the same kind of table to make a little history in Illinois today. The occasion was the annual stockholders meeting of Chrysler Corporation at which United Auto Workers President Douglas Fraser became a member of the company's board of directors. We're in a deep, deep recession. In Detroit, it's not a recession, it's a depression. And something needs to be done quickly to get this industry back on its feet. Mr. Fraser said automakers, including Chrysler, must make a go of it with the economy car to successfully compete with the imports. The price of a gallon of gasoline will not rise a dime on Thursday, as President Carter had wanted. A federal judge in Washington has declared the 10-cent fee unlawful. Judge Aubrey Robinson said, in effect, that the president does not have the power to impose such a fee on gasoline. The government plans to appeal the ruling. A more crucial first step could not be required of a new Secretary of State than the one taken by Edmund Muskie when he alighted in Belgium today. Our European allies have set Saturday as the deadline for imposing their own economic sanctions on Iran. And the new secretary is in Europe for no fewer than 20 separate meetings to add weight to carrying out that commitment. He met earlier today with President Carter to check signals, not altogether in the background as a point of discussion among our allies, is the Soviet Union's present in Afghanistan. During an airborne news conference en route to Brussels, Muskie told newsmen, quote, I've always found it useful for others to think of me as an intimidating sort of fellow, unquote. S several of Secretary of State Muskie's meetings will be with NATO officials who are already meeting in Brussels. American officials there report they've never seen NATO quite so concerned as officials are over the Soviet intervention in Afghanistan. Here at home, the board of directors of the Delta Dental Plan, a large nonprofit dentistry insurance program, voted tonight to keep its president, Onan Thompson, despite the fact that Mr. Thompson was convicted last month of falsifying claims and negotiations with the Virginia Minnesota School Board. The vote was taken in a closed meeting in Edina. None of the directors was willing to explain the vote to us. Also on the agenda was the resignation or removal of board members and their reports that that was intended as a punishment of board members who opposed President Thompson. But no one had anything at all to say about were that. Were there any resignations? I'm sorry, I'm not free to... You can't even say if there were resignation of board members? I'm sorry, I can't say that. Exactly. Or if there were they ousted? Them out. Were there removals of board members? Uh, I'm, I'm not free to comment. In short, the board members would not say why all the secrecy, except that it's a sensitive matter. It's a new decade in air travel, and there's a change in the air. Your airline for the 80s. U.S. Air. You're traveling the USA more than ever before. That's why U.S. Air will continue to change to give you the convenience and the savings you need when you fly the USA. You're changing, and so are we, to serve you even better. U.S. The Lawn Boy Mulcher Catch, the mower with the split personality. It's a superb rear bagger with a deck designed for easy trimming on both sides plus a big zipperless bag that empties quickly. And when you remove the rear catcher, the Lawn Boy Mulcher Catch becomes one of the finest mulching mowers made. The Lawn Boy Mulcher Catch. Two superb mowers in one. See it at your Lawn Boy dealer today. Minnesota Federal, a good neighbor to Minnesota savers, has traditionally offered the highest interest rates. And savings are now insured up to $100,000 you'll appreciate the friendly service and 32 convenient locations. And deposits may be made at any Minnesota Federal location, regardless of where the account was opened. There are handy drive-up teller windows, free parking at all offices, or save by mail, and Minnesota Federal will pay the postage both ways. Minnesota Federal, serving Minnesotans since 1877. In another, still another, major test of his powers, Iranian President Bonnie Seder has stripped a powerful Islamic judge of his powers and title. Bonnie Seder took the action against Sheikh Sadiq Kali Kali. 
because the Sheik had defied a presidential ban when he ordered the destruction of a mausoleum built by the ousted Shah. Today, workmen were still demolishing the mausoleum, which Bonnie Sutter had wanted preserved. He said it would stand as a monument to the crimes committed by the Shah and his father. Meanwhile, in Iran today, thousands turned out of the demonstration honoring the two Iranians who were killed last week in the siege of the uh, Iranian embassy in London. Thousands of students turned out for a violent protest in Seoul, South Korea today. The students were protesting the continued military regime which took over the government after the assassination of President Park. Police and students clashed shortly after the protest began. The students threw bottles and rocks and the police retaliated with tear gas and riot sticks. Well, they're counting the votes tonight in primaries in Maryland and Nebraska. And here's a late report. President Carter and Ronald Reagan edged ever closer to their party's presidential nominations, each winning today's primaries in Maryland and Nebraska. Mr. Carter's victory in Nebraska over Edward Kennedy went against the record of primaries past, at least for the Democrats, and that is that the candidate who shows his face the most in the state usually is the winner. Mr. Carter, sticking by the White House, was not seen at all in person in Nebraska, but CBS News estimates that when all the votes are counted tonight, he will be the winner, though not by much. Reagan, in handily defeating George Bush in the Republican contest, relied on the same organization that defeated incumbent President Gerald Ford in 1976. The same fate was in store today for Bush. In Maryland, Reagan was a loser to Mr. Ford four years ago, but today he defeated Bush, but not by the landslide margin of Nebraska. On the Democratic side, President Carter the winner again over Senator Kennedy by a wider margin than was the case in Nebraska. The spoils today are a total of 83 Democratic delegates and 55 Republican, not enough to ensure nomination for the frontrunners, but a significant addition to current assets. Dan Rather, CBS News Election Headquarters, New York. Motorboats will not be banned from Twin Lakes in suburban Hennepin County, at least not for right now. City officials in the three communities bordering the lakes, Crystal, Robbinsdale, and Brooklyn Center, asked the county board to ban the motorboats, a move highly uh, hotly opposed by the Lakeshore residents. The county board today delayed action on the motorboat ban and decided instead to increase water patrol time on the lakes from six hours a month to 12 hours a week. There have been complaints about careless operation of the motorboats on those lakes. Opponents of the Bethel Job Corps Center say they won't give up their fight. And that's after the U.S. Supreme Court decided not to review a lower court decision favoring the Bethel site. State Representative Mike Fritz, who is an opposition leader, says his group will be looking for other ways to block the center. Tonight, part two of this week's special series on public schools and public school teachers, which we call Flunking the Future. Bob Barb Brown has the report. Dave, as you recall, last night we outlined several factors which may cause us to flunk our educational future. The factors are woven into a complex web, but tonight we'll try to tell you what the job of teaching itself is like. Six hours a day with 27, 28, 30, 10 and 11 year olds is a very difficult job. I've had 15 jobs, I counted them up. Teaching was by far the most difficult job that I ever had. Vic Kern taught at the elementary level for 10 years before quitting to take a job with the Minnesota Federation of Teachers. When you're teaching, you're on stage from 8.30 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon. You get a half hour off for lunch, maybe a half hour prep period every couple of days, preparation period. But you're on stage. It's a very, very demanding job. Rick Olson taught senior high English in Chaska for six years. My Sunday afternoons, at one o'clock on Sunday afternoon, I'd start to gear for the next week. Um, so my weekends really weren't weekends. This paperwork is continually coming out my ears. You mentioned about an hour to two hours a night. That's very standard. And uh, as we get into midterm times and, and close to the end of the semesters, those numbers at least double. Tom Amundsen teaches humanities and coaches drama at Edina West High School. Thing. The past vacation that we just spent, while all my students are coming back with tans from the Bahamas and from Hawaii <coughs> and Ecuador and wherever in the world else they've been, uh, I'm coming back from my apartment where my face is white from the reflections off these essay papers and grade cards that I've had. Lori Dahlstrom, current events teacher at Valley Middle School in Rosemount, says she could give her students fill-in-the-blank tests rather than making her students write out answers in complete sentences. But she takes the extra time to correct the essay tests to reinforce writing skills. 
I really feel that we're cheating today as a school because we're having them fill in the blanks, and it's not a fill in the blank world totally yet, you know? Not all teachers do put in the extra hours preparing, correcting, and grading, but we found that those who don't are in the minority. We also found that there aren't many teachers who are able to spend their summers soaking up the sunshine, traveling, or puttering around the house. People in general that were discussed in the reading. Hard. Tom Lindquist, English teacher and debate coach at Edina West. 13 years now. You know, I take two weeks off in the summer, and we plan a vacation. Other than that, I'm working or I'm in school. I, I don't know where this glorious three months is. I, I just haven't seen it. Well, As many teachers do, Jim Vogt spent his summers advancing his own education, one way to move up on the salary schedule. And so my summers, two of my summers, I, I drove uh, 120 miles around tip trip to Mankato a day to take four or eight credits, whatever I could squeeze in. And I guess after eight, eight credits, I would get a $150 pay increase. That $150 increase, by the way, is the yearly increase. And that brings up another issue. Do we pay teachers enough for what they do? In Minnesota, the average starting salary for a liberal arts graduate in fields other than education is over $16,000. For beginning teachers, it's just over $10,000. As our series continues, we'll explore the implications of teacher salaries. This is the full-size 1980 Ford F-100. It gets 19 miles to the gallon, according to the EPA. This is the subcompact Chevrolet Monza. The EPA says it gets 15 miles to the gallon. Both have six-cylinder engines. Both have manual transmissions. 19 miles to the gallon. 15 miles to the gallon. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Prices have been slashed again during the Zare Shopper City going out of business sale. Yes, prices are slashed again. Their total complete stock is being sold at 30% off with savings up to 60% on selected yellow tag items. All Zare merchandise will be sold, including famous brands on a first-come, first-served basis. Every Zare department, every line, clothing, houseware, stereo, hardware, appliances, toys, sporting goods, and more. All sales are final, so hurry. Shop these hours now during the Zare Shopper City going out of business sale. It's the buy of a lifetime. Over the years, the house that you can build with your original homeowner's insurance coverage gets smaller. A lot smaller. That's why coverage from American Family Insurance automatically increases with rising building costs. We can't stop inflation, but we can keep it from shrinking your house. American Family Insurance. For your auto, home, business, health, and life. Your American Family Agent is a family insurance specialist. See the yellow pages. When is the last time you had your eyes examined? If it's more than a year ago, don't put it off much longer. Because an eye exam not only tells you if your prescription has changed, it also helps screen for glaucoma, one of the leading causes of blindness. At Pearl Vision Center, we'll give you a thorough eye exam with the latest professional equipment. After all, even though we sell eyeglasses, this is one pair we hate to sell. Pearl Vision Center, the value center for eye care. The burning ban has been lifted in 32 Minnesota counties, including the counties of the Twin Cities area. State officials say the recent rains have reduced the fire danger in those areas, but the ban has not been lifted in 21 other counties, primarily in northern Minnesota. Open fires and outdoor smoking still prohibited in those areas. I hope we're not putting a hex on. I hope we're not too overconfident about that. And you see well, you rain know, the, continuing uh, in the no, forecast? No, as a matter of fact, the rain that came across us just did come across the southern part of the state. Those counties that were excluded were mm -hmm. ones that did not get any rain. And uh, unfortunately, the rain stopped now for the next few days. So Don't burn <laughs> folks outside That's or right. smoke outside for a while, I guess. Uh, high today, though, uh, we got up into the... Uh, 60s? Whee! Almost. <laughs> 56 degrees, 43 for a low. Sunrise, sunset uh, for tomorrow. Uh, right now in the Twin Cities, we're looking at a 51 degree reading. We've had a lot of people phone and say, is it going to freeze tonight? Well, we think that we're going to keep the cloud cover and uh, 
uh, enough uh, stirring of the air to uh, keep us from dropping below the frost point tonight. Uh, temperatures falling down into the mid-30s, perhaps, in some of the outlying areas, a little above that in the inner uh, city areas. Northwest at three miles an hour, the winds right now, the barometer reading 3000 and rising. The cloud cover that we just mentioned extends well over the southern part of the state, all the way up through the northern part of the state, and then eastward into uh, Wisconsin. Uh, no rain showers have been reported now since about four o'clock this afternoon, any place in the five state area. A little more clearing taking place out in the Dakotas, but that clearing is going to be a little slow getting into us. As a matter of fact, the instability showers that developed this afternoon may well return tomorrow, uh, as the way it looks right now. WeatherNet cities uh, came in with uh, high temperature reports in the 50s and uh, one exception, 60 degrees down at St. Peter. The highs from across the country uh, look something like this. A uh, big area of uh, 80s down through the southeast, uh, 90 down in southern Texas. As a matter of fact, Laredo, Texas reached 100 degrees today for the hot spot in the country. But uh, 50s were generally the rule over the five state area, dropping off uh, quickly into the, uh, into the 30s up to the north of us. And uh, that's the way the pattern's going to remain. We're not going to warm up a great deal. We're not going to have a great deal of cooling either. Take a look at our radar. We're not detecting any precipitation, as we said, just the ground clutter. The uh, satellite sequence, though, shows a couple of interesting things. We watch this area down in uh, Texas uh, build and develop a uh, pretty good thunderstorm activity beginning to develop right here and moving eastward. That's what created the tornadoes down in Texas. We had reports of three of them down there. The activity up over uh, Michigan, you can see, uh, develop uh, right through there. And uh, that's what produced the uh, tornadoes tornadoes there. Five reported tornadoes in Michigan, but most of the injuries and, uh, and the deaths and the damage came from the Kalamazoo area. We've had no reports of any other areas uh, receiving any uh, damaging weather. Out in the Dakotas, some clearing, but still enough clouds over us to help keep that temperature from dropping off too much tonight. The low pressure area that's producing all that severe weather uh, is the one that just moved uh, south of us through the night last night and brought us the uh, little amount of rain, about 13 hundredths of an inch out at the airport, but showers and uh, thunderstorms and tornadoes breaking out all along that cold front today. Not a lot of temperature contrast across the front, but enough at least to produce the, uh, the severe weather that has uh, broken out. High pressure back to the west of us will be building down. Uh, earlier this morning, before that uh, weather started to clear, again, some light snow fell in southern uh, Wyoming. That's about the fourth day in a row now. They've had some snow activity back there. High pressure will really be dominating our weather over the next uh, couple of days, but it will be kind of slow to move in tomorrow, and we still will have a chance of some light showers uh, developing, some widely scattered showers in the afternoon. Partly cloudy tonight through early tomorrow morning, a low of about 37 degrees, a range really of uh, 35 to 40. Partly cloudy tomorrow with a chance of some isolated showers. Winds out of the north at 5 to 15 and a high temperature of about 58, about what we had today. The extended outlook uh, calls for the next chance of some moisture coming in on uh, Sunday and uh, partly to mostly sunny conditions until then. Uh, high temperature 70 to 75 and lows 45 to 55 degrees. All right, about 1,000 peeps showed up at the St. Paul Radisson tonight for the regional banquet of the National Conference of Christians and Jews. A control data chairman, William Norris, tonight became the recipient of the group's annual humanitarian. Doug? Well, tonight was opening night at Northrop Auditorium for the world-famous Shanghai Acrobatic Theater. A group of jugglers, tumblers, and gymnasts is on a 14-week tour of the United States. This is the group's first visit to this country. They'll be performing at Northrop through Saturday, but before they took the stage tonight, there was one last rehearsal, and reporter Tony Saffold was there. Acrobatics is an ancient Chinese art form that goes back 2,000 years. Since then, feats of strength have been combined with graceful expression to make acrobatics what it is today. The 67 men and women who make up the Shanghai Acrobatic Theater are as well-trained emotionally as they are physically. a training school attached to the theater and uh, the school was founded in 1956 and I think you know our company was founded in 1951. The group's six-day visit here will be a shared experience. The performers will get a view of Minnesota in 1980 and the audiences may walk away with some idea of old world China. Tony Saffold, WCCO Television News in Minneapolis. Beans sure look good again, Charlie. Still using Treflan? Yep. Sure keeps the fox tail and the pigweed down. Yep. 
Oh, that Treff land sure does a job. How do you incorporate it? Well, sometimes they use a disc and sometimes a field cultivator. Yeah? Sometimes I use a henway. Henway? What's a henway? Oh, about four pounds. It's confidence, Charlie. <laughs> Hey, Ernie, let me show you something. My new ad in the Yellow Pages. What do you think? I like it. But those are not the Yellow Pages. What do you mean they're not the Yellow Pages? They're yellow and they're pages. See? Those are not the Bell System Yellow Pages. So? So not as many people are going to see your nice ad, Bert. Be sure you put your ad in the Bell System Yellow Pages. More advertisers do, because it's the directory more people use when they're ready to buy. You're about to see a pure gold ingot become a watch. First, pure molten gold is cast into ingots and secured in a Swiss bank. Then Coram's master watchmakers insert the gold ingot into a solid 18 karat gold case. Each watch is numbered, carries a certificate of authenticity and is patented. The pure gold ingot watch by Coram. An investment in time. Available at fine jewelers. Nearly a decade ago, she was talking about the revival of romance and how to put sparkle back into your marriage. She's Maribel Morgan, and this time she's sizzling on the stove with the Total Woman Cookbook. And on our next show, Maribel will share with us her special recipes like Time for Romance and a housewife's guide to coping with the football season. Cooking with the Total Women, Maribel Morgan on the next Donahue. Game one of the Stanley Cup Finals tonight in Philadelphia. They are in overtime. The Flyers and Islanders are 3-3. The Islanders scored with three and a half minutes left, sent that game into overtime. They are right now 3-3. The Red Sox beat the Twins 10-5 in Fenway Park tonight. The Twins led 4-1 in that game, but after a 35-minute rain delay, the Red Sox rallied behind the booming bat of Freddie Lynn. Who else? The loss could be a costly one for the Twins. Third baseman John Castino sprained his left ankle here when he hit the first base bag. Castino had to be helped from the field. The extent of the injury not yet known at this time. He has been taken to a hospital as a precautionary measure with a sprained ankle. We might add, due to technical difficulties, we are in black and white on these highlights. Fred Lynn hit for the cycle for Boston, getting a single, a double, a triple, and this home run, which put the Red Sox ahead for good at 6-5. to five. Al Williams, the starter for the Twins. John Verhoeven, who gave up Lynn's home run, took the loss. Carl Yastrzemski also homered for Boston. Ken Landrell extending his hitting streak to 16 games, although he may have to wait till next season season to break uh, Lenny Green's record because if the players do strike, it would be one game too soon for Landro. Baltimore beat Texas 4-2. to two. Toronto, Seattle postponed because of rain. Elsewhere, Detroit over Oakland 4-3. to three. Kansas City beat the Yankees 4-1. to one. Chicago leading Milwaukee 5-4 in the 8th. California, Cleveland postponed because of rain. National League, Atlanta over Phillies 7-3. Cincinnati clobbering the Mets 15-4. Ray Knight hit two home runs in the fifth inning in that game. Second one, a grand slam. Montreal beat uh, Leeds Houston 3-2 in the ninth. On the coast, St. Louis and San Diego 1-0 for the Cards in the fifth. Chicago leads the Dodgers 2-1 in the second. And San Francisco leading uh, Pittsburgh 2-0 in the third. Burt Blylevin, former twin, who said he'd never again pitch for Pittsburgh, is pitching for Pittsburgh. The Gopher baseball team opened, or I should say, closed out its Big Ten season, beating Wisconsin twice at Siebert Field this afternoon. The Gophers now have to wait until Sunday night to find out if they'll receive an NCAA tournament berth. Minnesota won the first game 9-1 in a combined two-hitter by Ed Reck and Tom Smith. Tom Schnell's first collegiate home run here in the second inning gave the Gophers a 3-0 lead. Schnell is a junior from Hastings, Minnesota. Ron Van Krevlin from Cooper drove in three runs with a couple of base hits. The Gophers rallied to win the second game 10-5. Mike Lawson, one of three seniors on Minnesota's squad, homered twice and drove in five runs. The Gophers are now 14-4 in the Big Ten, clinching second place. Their overall record is 33-13. Should be good enough to earn them a berth in the regional playoffs. But uh, that will not be known, as we say, until this weekend. There may be some progress in the Major League Baseball contract negotiations soon. Club owners have apparently softened in their position. Today, they lowered their compensation demands for free agents. The Players Association is examining that offer. Al McAdam, who led the North Stars in scoring throughout the regular season and the playoffs, is the winner of this year's Bill Masterton Trophy. The trophy awarded to the NHL player who best exemplifies the qualities of 
perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey, McAdam is the first North Star to receive the award, which was established in memory of Bill Masterton, the former North Star. McAdam will receive the award this Sunday afternoon during the Stanley Cup luncheon in Long Island. Our congratulations to Al McAdam. Well, most fishermen who fall in the beginner class will be uh, going with the closed face reels this season, but the majority are advanced fishermen, and I'm told by tackle buyer John Goplin of Burger Brothers that the way to go in reels is with the open face. Most people, the avid fishermen, are going to what they call the open face spinning reel, okay? Uh, here what you do is you've got the line going around on a bale. Okay, to disengage it to cast, you simply pick up that line going through the rod, flip the bale out of the way so now your finger becomes the bale, in essence. Okay, to cast, you simply release the finger when you want the line to go. To engage it, all you do is start reeling forward and the bale will flip over. John says the open face requires very little uh, practice. We have a final score, Doug. The Islanders win that hockey game 4-3 to three in overtime over the uh, Flyers. Okay, Ralph, and the Minneapolis Police and Fire Departments have just informed us that their emergency phone is malfunctioning tonight. So if you need the police or the fire department in Minneapolis, the number to call is 348-2861. That's 348-2861, Minneapolis Police and Fire Departments. That's a number for tonight because the regular one is malfunctioning. And that's the end of this edition of the 10 p.m. report. Thank you, and good night. Good night. I believe in jumping frogs. I believe in corn on the cob. I believe in Wilers. I believe in a real good time. A lemonade taste will do just fine. I believe in Wilers. You can believe in Wilers lemonade flavor crystals. What's new? 100% natural lemon flavor. Improved to taste more lemony than ever. I believe in being first, especially when it comes to thirst. I believe in Wilers. Meet Horizons, the new shoes that comfort your feet, curve for curve. The soft rise of the toes holds your foot in place. A gentle lift supports your arch. And this hollow hugs your heel. Horizons are where feet and comfort meet. And their light flexi bottoms tame hard sidewalks. Horizons by Naturalizer. Comfort you've got to feel. New spring cobby cuddlers available in the Red Cross shoe department of all Dayton stores. Special this week at Arthur Treacher's. Just $1.99 for this delicious breaded tailless shrimp dinner with chips and hush puppies while supply lasts at Arthur Treacher's. WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Today, Robert Myers uh, wrote a book, has a brother who is, uh, could be described as...